Ever wondered why selecting the right conductor is such a big deal in power transmission? It's because a major chunk of the investment in transmission lines goes straight into the conductors. And choosing the right material and size isn't just a matter of cost. It's about striking the perfect balance between electrical performance and mechanical strength. Now, for a material to be considered suitable for transmission and distribution of electric power, it should tick a few very crucial boxes. It must have high electrical conductivity, strong tensile strength to endure mechanical stresses, be low in cost so that it can economically cover long distances and have a low specific gravity to keep the weight in check. But here's the catch. No single material satisfies all these conditions perfectly. That's why we always need to compromise between cost and the desired electrical and mechanical properties when selecting conductor materials. Let's talk about the materials commonly used for overhead conductors. You'll frequently come across copper, aluminium, steel cord aluminium, galvanized steel, and even cadmium copper in certain applications. But before we dive into those, there's one thing you should know. All overhead line conductors are preferably stranded. Solid wires are only used when the cross-sectional area is small. If you use solid conductors with large cross-sections over longer spans, you risk mechanical fatigue and eventual fracture due to constant vibration and swinging. Stranded conductors are more flexible and consist of a central core wire, around which successive layers of wires are wound, usually 6, 12, 18, 24, and so on. In fact, if there are n layers, the total number of individual wires is given by the formula, 3n times n plus 1 plus 1. This ensures a symmetrical and balanced construction. These layers are twisted in opposite directions to bind them tightly together. Now, let's start with copper. This metal is almost the gold standard when it comes to conductors high conductivity, excellent tensile strength, and very durable. It's used in the hard-drawn form to boost tensile strength even if it slightly compromises conductivity. Copper has a high current density, meaning you need a smaller cross-sectional area to carry the same current. That leads to two big benefits less material needed and lower wind pressure acting on the conductor. It's durable, homogeneous, and has high scrap value too. But then comes the cost. Copper is expensive and not always readily available. That's why aluminium has taken its place in most modern applications. Aluminium is cheaper and much lighter than copper. However, it has only about 60% the conductivity of copper. That means for the same power transmission efficiency, the aluminium conductor must have a larger cross-sectional area. If you want the same resistance, an aluminium conductor needs to be about 1.26 times the diameter of a copper one. This larger surface area means more exposure to wind pressure, so your towers must be stronger and taller, adding to the overall cost. Yet aluminium's low specific gravity, just 2.71 grams per cubic centimeter compared to copper's 8.9 grams per cubic centimeter, means it's nearly half the weight of copper, so lighter support structures can be used. But here's the flip side. Because it's so light, aluminium conductors tend to swing more, which means larger cross arms are needed. Plus, with lower tensile strength and higher thermal expansion, aluminium sags more. Still, if you look at the overall package, price, weight, conductivity, and ease of installation, aluminium wins for most transmission applications. Especially in heavy current transmission, where conductor cost is a huge factor, aluminium becomes the obvious choice. But even aluminium has its limitations. The greater sag it causes makes it unsuitable for long spans. And that's exactly where steel reinforced aluminium comes in, also known in the industry as ACSR or aluminium conductor steel reinforced. Now let's dig deep into this one, because this is where the magic happens in overhead transmission. The ACSR conductor consists of a central galvanized steel core surrounded by strands of aluminium. The galvanization prevents rusting and corrosion making it ideal for long-term use in open environments. Typically, the cross-sectional ratio of steel to aluminium is 1 to 6, but this can be increased to 1 to 4 if more tensile strength is needed. Here's a fun fact. Even though you're adding steel, the overall weight of the composite ACSR conductor is still 25% less than an equivalent copper conductor. That's a huge win in terms of material handling and tower design. Now picture this. The steel core handles most of the mechanical strength, while the aluminium strands carry the bulk of the current. This clever distribution makes ACSR perfect for long-distance high-voltage transmission. You might have even heard these conductors by their trade names in the field. Zebra, Panther, 
moose, dog, or even rabbit, each representing different configurations tailored to specific current and voltage ratings across transmission systems. Because ACSR has higher tensile strength, it allows for longer spans with smaller sag, meaning fewer towers, less cost, and easier maintenance. In fact, because of the reduced sag, you can even go for shorter towers, which again adds to the cost advantage. Next, we have galvanized steel conductors. They're used in rural areas or short spans where high mechanical stress is expected, but electrical conductivity isn't a major concern. Steel has very high tensile strength, so it works great for very long spans or unusual terrain. But due to its low conductivity, you can't use it to carry large power over long distances. Still, in short, low-demand rural lines, it gets the job done affordably. And finally, let's touch upon cadmium copper. This is basically copper alloyed with a small percentage, about 1-2% to 2 of cadmium. That small addition boosts tensile strength by nearly 50%, while only reducing conductivity by 15%. That makes cadmium copper ideal for very long span applications, where you need strength but still want decent conductivity. However, cadmium is expensive, so this material is used only in small cross-sectional lines where the support cost outweighs the conductor cost. So now the question goes to you. Which conductor type do you think best balances cost, strength and performance for overhead transmission lines? Have you ever come across names like Zebra or Panther in real-life installations? Tell us in the comments below. We'd love to hear your thoughts. If this video helped you understand conductor materials better, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to Electrology. And if you'd like to support the channel, you can hit the thanks button or become a channel member by clicking the join button below. We'd really appreciate it. Until next time, keep learning and stay electrified.